I saw your critique on the movie, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. Yeah. And I watched it, you know, I haven't watched it with my mom yet because my mom is, she, she's like a newbie to all of this activism and just learning about Fred Hampton, which is good. I like the educator on stuff. But I can't watch movies with my mom. Sorry, she's gonna she's gonna kill me for saying this because my mom just talk, talk, talk. I gotta <laughs> I gotta watch the movie by myself first right. and then go there. That's me. That's me. <laughs> I can't do that. You gotta <laughs> so, absorb it first. It it was um, you know, from my opinion, it was uh very good for I guess it's a good start for those who haven't done their, you know, done their research on them or heard any of his speeches or, or things like that, don't know anything about the movement. Um, it's a good a good movie to watch when it comes to that. Um, they are missing a lot of things to me. I, I felt like they could have put in, you know, a lot more, but um, we know how Hollywood is sometimes. So what is your perspective on it? How did you critique the movie? Part of my critique comes from the fact that I interviewed Fred Hampton's son, uh, about four years ago. So this was my first, the first reporting, or uh, yeah, kind of the first piece I ever did for Essence was mm -hmm. about Fred Hampton's life and the experiences of his family. So his son and the mother of his child, um, like leading up to his death. So I had like hours long conversations with, uh, with Fred Hampton Jr. And I know that they consulted a bit on the film. And so coming out of that conversation, there was just, there was like a lot of love and humanity that I got out of him talking about his father. Like the, the fact that he fundamentally cared about his people, cared about them so much that he was willing to sacrifice his life, cared about his, his uh, Akua, who is her, you know, her, uh, I guess, white name <laughs> would, would be Deborah, but her African name is Akua. That's how we do it. You know, in some black communities, we change our name so that we can honor, you know, the ancestors. So she changed her name to Akua. But there was like a, a lot of love from the Panthers in terms of like what they wanted to give back to their community all over the country. It was a lot of love. And they were also like very, uh, this was a good phrase that I heard from my godfather who used to be a Black Panther. And he saw the film and also critiqued it. But he said that the Panthers were very intellectual and the way that Hollywood dramatizes things, they're doing it to get, you know, a certain emotional effect. And so it felt like, like The Departed or like a crime drama um, yeah. or like a mafia movie where you kind of, it's almost, in a, in a way, I felt like it was painting the Panthers as almost like this other, like this street gang who was fighting like these other gangs, but they like, he, you know, Fred Hampton was like the ultimate mafia boss who could like bring them all together. Like, I know that's not what they were saying, but it just felt almost like they were equating him to like what was going on in the, in, in the streets. And the Panthers like were, in, they were intellectuals as well as activists, but we got thrust in a specific moment of time in the Panthers that I feel people might assume that's how it always was. But like, what about their study groups? Like, what about the fact that they were reading a little red book? That they were reading, you know, like socialist and, and communist philosophy. And they, they were sitting down and making sure that you had political education classes before you even were handed a gun. So it's not like everybody was out here willy-nilly like cops and robbers shooting. Right. Like you literally had to get a book and study all this political theory before you even like thought about self-defense. And so. That was a way for them to vet people. And so I work with a social justice organization called Operation Power. And we actually just had an event where we interviewed Fred Hampton Jr. and his mom. They talk about some of the details that they proposed for the film that didn't you know, make it. And so they wanted a copy of the little red book like sitting in that office because that was like critical. Like the theory was yeah. critical to their work. So it was like, it was a lack of, of respect for the intellectualism of the Panthers. It was the lack of any historical context as to why people would become so radical as to pick up a gun. And, you know, right. that's really a death sentence. If you pick up a gun against a, against a cop in Chicago, like, you know that you're about to die. So what right, would lead right, people right. to that? Like, what could radicalize you so much? You know, so even like a little two minute montage showing that they assassinated Martin Luther King, like, you know, um, well, actually that was a year later. He was assassinated in 67, but like, right. Martin Luther King was being targeted. They assassinated Malcolm X, you know, um, prior to that. You had all these 
communities that had gone up into flames because police police violence was rampant all over the country. You had the Watts riots that ended up encouraging the creation of the Black Panther Party. And the Watts riots came out of the police like abusing, um, it was like a-, a King. Black, well, no, yeah, Rodney, Rodney King. much later, but, but even- Oh, oh yes, the Watts. Back, like 65, I think, were the Watts riots. So police, like this fascist state has been ongoing. So even like a cute little historical montage to show the Panthers weren't just out here like with guns, you know, no, like, yeah, you know, they're out in the West. <laughs> you know? They didn't. They didn't. And and that's what I when I watch these type of movies that Hollywood do, you know, that's what it's for. It it, it rouses you up. It gets your emotions going. You after you watch a movie like that, you like you know what? I can't do this shit no more. And um, it's not the history that you would want to really take away from that that movie. I want to see. I want to learn how they implemented the school system with the children the free programs, the free lunch. Those type of things weren't exposed to, until the Black Panther uh, created those things for their community. Right. Yeah, Sh Chicago so, was that example. The free exactly. lunch was actually like a, a model that the country used for their free lunch programs throughout all of our public education systems. Absolutely, absolutely.